Hey guys, it's Libby. Welcome to Venerable Fashions. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a Regency capsule wardrobe to get you through any event. This video is for people who are new to sewing or at least new to Regency sewing and need to create a wardrobe fast for an upcoming event, as well as for people who already have a Regency wardrobe who need to select a couple of items to get into a tiny suitcase in order to travel to an event. It is also appropriate for people who have a couple of one day or one evening Regency events scattered throughout the year who want to have a couple of options so they're not wearing the same thing to every event but don't want to invest in a whole big complicated Regency wardrobe. My first suggestion is to narrow down your time period. The actual historical Regency was nine years from 1811 to 1820, but what costumers call the Regency is kind of more like 30 years from the late 1790s to the late 1820s. Of course, in the world of high fashion, trends are changing every year, but I normally break the Regency into three periods of early Regency from about 1796 to 1805, high Regency from 1806 to 1816, and late Regency from 1817 to 1828. If you are new to costuming or if you need to create this capsule wardrobe fast, I would suggest sticking with either early or high Regency. Late Regency isn't as well supported in the costuming industry, you could say. There aren't as many patterns. Um, 1820s are not quite as popular as I think they should be, although all my Regency clothes are early Regency, so I'm not one to talk. Um, but yeah, there's not as many patterns, there's not as much advice on how to create late Regency styles. It also gets a little bit more fiddly, fiddly with like all that decor around the hems. The reason that you want to narrow your time period is because this is going to be a mix and match style wardrobe, so we want garments that will work with each other. It's going to look kind of weird if you have an 1890s skirt sticking out from under an 1820s Spencer. So getting down to the actual garments you will need. First is your base layer. You're going to wear this under every other outfit. You're going to need a chemise, a pair of stockings, a corset or pair of stays suitable to whichever time period you've chosen, um, a petticoat, and a pair of shoes. I recommend having two chemises and two pairs of stockings because those are the garments that are going to get the grossest and you are going to want to be able to wash one set while you're wearing the other. For the stockings, you can also get away with like modern knee-high cotton socks if you don't want to go buy like official Regency or Georgian stockings. No one's going to be looking at your feet. Then moving on to the layers, people will actually see your first and most important garment is the classic Regency little white dress. If you absolutely hate white or think that this is too cliched, you can definitely get away with dresses in other colors. But you will then have to pay a little bit more attention to the garments that go with it to make sure that the colors don't clash too much. And you want your little white dress to have versatile sleeves. That means they can be worn for either day or evening. Now for early Regency, this is pretty easy because a lot of sleeves for both day and evening wear ends just above the elbow. So if you're doing early Regency, make your little white dress with sleeves that hit just above the elbow and you won't have to worry about it at the actual event. If you're doing a high or late Regency, I would suggest making a bodice with a puffed sleeve, which is permanently sewn in, like a short puff sleeve permanently sewn in, and then have long sleeves that attach to the like band of the puff sleeve that you can whip in and then pick out as needed. It can be a little bit of a pain to have to sew in your sleeves every day, but this is a historical practice and it's a lot faster than making a whole other dress. Then your next garment is a second day dress. If you want to, you can also make this be versatile for day or evening, but I'm gonna be treating it as a pure day dress, not appropriate for evening wear. And especially if you're new to costuming, I would really suggest making the second day dress out of the same pattern as your little white dress. Most patterns nowadays have like multiple options for bodice styles or sleeve styles. So you can keep the complicated fitting of the back and the arms eye and the front lining the same and just change the front. Or honestly, if you keep the pattern exactly the same and just make it in a different fabric, it's still gonna look different enough that no one will care. Next garment you're gonna want is a chemisette, which is like a shirt, but only for the chest and upper back, um, which is gonna fill in the neckline of your little white dress and your other day dress. Your other day dress can also have a high neckline, in which case you might wanna have the chemisette, like the frills sort of peeking out of the top. That can be very cute. If you're doing early Regency, you can also get away with a kerchief here, which is just a hemmed triangle that you wrap around your neck. 
Next garment is some sort of outerwear. So I think for most people this is going to be a spencer, but you can also make a cloak. Um, red or cardinal red was a very popular color for cloaks throughout the Georgian period. Spencers are harder to make because they have to actually fit you as opposed to a cloak, which is just like a giant semicircle that you wrap around yourself. Um, but it is going to require less fabric, so you can sort of balance out your time versus budget ratio. But do remember that cloaks are also going to take up more room in a suitcase. So if you're flying somewhere, it's probably going to be better to do Regent to do a Spencer. Um, but if you're driving somewhere and you can just sort of fill up the back of your car, cloak should be fine. The next garment is your bonnet, which is also useful in hiding your hair in case you're having a bad hair day, the curls didn't set, whatever happened, I understand the bonnet will hide it. With bonnets and other one or two size fits all accessories like gloves or stockings, you might be able to find these at the event. Many events have like vendors or marketplaces where you can go and buy some stuff. So you may be able to pick this up at the event, in which case you don't have to make it yourself, but do check to see like what vendors will be at the event. Um, are they going to sell bonnets? And um, is, is the marketplace going to open by the time you need the bonnet? Then I've got another optional piece of headwear, which is a cap. Uh, now, in the Regency period, married women and also older unmarried women were expected to cover their hair. I always wear a cap. One, it like my hair is a little bit more red than is historically accurate, so I'm generally trying to cover it a little bit. I am also married in real life, and so I normally sort of portray a married person um, in my costumes. And I'm also 29, and in most periods of history, like if you're not married, what's wrong with you at 29? Caps can also be helpful under unlined straw bonnets because since Sometimes little bits of straw will grab your hair and pull it out of your style, but a bonnet will protect the little flyaways. Finally, your last garment is where you can really like have fun, get experimental, because this is a quite experimental um, garment in the Regency period, and that is some sort of overdress or evening spencer. This is going to make your little white dress clearly an evening garment. As you move throughout the Regency period, there are a bunch of different styles of oh, like evening overgarment that you can wear. In the early Regency, you've got open robes and also these like weird little like pseudo peplos greco-roman things and then in the high and late regency you move into more sort of fitted evening spencers if you've made a spencer for the daytime you can reuse the pattern chop off the sleeves and make it out of silk bada boom bada bing evening spencer I will take you through a sample weekend event and give you ideas of how you can combine these garments into different looks. I'm imagining an event which is an evening event on Friday, a day and evening event on Saturday, and then a day event on Sunday. So we've got two days and two evenings. So on Friday evening, which I'm imagining as the semi-formal evening option, um, you can wear just your little white dress. Then on Saturday, let your little white dress hang to air out. You probably don't need to wash it and wear your day dress with a chemisette and cap. This is more of an indoor look for Saturday. On Sunday, we're gonna do more of an outdoor look. If you're not reenacting and you're just going to like a mainly costume focused event, uh, people don't really care if you're wearing indoor garments for outdoors or outdoor garments for indoors because for things like costume college, the entire event is indoors and if you wanted to show off your outerwear, um, you would like, you'd never be able to do that. Um, so lots of people wear like Spencers and cloaks uh, at Costume College, even though we're technically inside. It is also freezing at Costume College, so you may find that you need them. For Saturday evening, you can get out your little white dress again and wear it with the evening overdress. So this is our more formal option. And then on Sunday, you can wear your little white dress or your other day dress with a chemisette, your spencer or cloak, and your bonnet. You can also wear your cap under your bonnet if it's there to protect your hair. Or if you like it. I think they're kind of cute. Thank you all very much for watching and good luck designing your own Regency capsule wardrobe. If you have any questions at all, I will be in the comments to answer them. See you later.